Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the shop once again. So today we have an 07 F-150 here, 543 valve, uh, that has a couple different issues. He's in for a timing job, but he also has an issue with misfires occurring on cylinders two and four. And there's no timing error codes. Uh, it runs great otherwise. Slight misfire on those cylinders. Another shop put a bunch of uh, parts on there, coils, plugs, probably injectors, everything else. And in the end they said, we think the intake's cracked and it's leaking air into those cylinders causing a lean misfire. Um, so he had me pre-order an intake for it, but I told them these engines, the 543 valve, I've never seen a cracked intake in my entire career. So um, sure enough, this one does not have a cracked intake on it. It's actually something very simple and it's related to the reason why he brought it in for a timing job. But there's no error code set for timing. So how did I figure that out? Well, today we're going to show you what to check in this situation um, that you can, so you can figure it out for yourself. So you're not just throwing parts at it like this guy was. Well, his mechanic was. Um, and he could save money and kind of pinpoint the diagnosis on there. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, here we go. Some quick diagnostics. You can see this 07 has 187,000 miles on. That's pretty darn good for uh, original timing components on there. So let's go ahead and look at the power balance on here, start it up, and see what's really going on. They said cylinders two and four. I'm not sure they had the power balance uh, tool. Let's see what it is. So we definitely have two, we definitely have four, but also one and three are misfiring compared to the other cylinders. So one, two, three, and four are all bank one uh, cylinders. So if there's a problem on bank one, like timing or cats or something like that, they're all gonna be affected like this in general. And sure enough, they are. So one, three, two, and four. Uh, whereas the other cylinders on bank two seem to be unaffected. All right, so when I had this kind of concern, I go in and I look at some live data on the scan tool, okay? So the first thing I look at is the barrel frequency. The barrel frequency will tell you if the cats are plugged. It'll drop, drop, drop if the cats are plugged because the air can't come in because it can't get out. Therefore, for your running conditions, it's not seeing as much airflow past the MAF, drops the barrel, thinks you're at a higher elevation, and boom, there it is. So this one looks good to go. It should be around 156 in this area. Again, he's from Mississippi, so maybe a different elevation down there, but it looks pretty darn good, all right? The next thing I look at for a supposed lean condition due to a cracked intake would be your fuel trims, of course, right? So we're looking at bank one and two fuel trims right there. And, you know, bank two is, you know, a little out there. Usually it's in the positive. Uh, but bank one is definitely it's actually showing rich. So if the intake was cracked, it would show lean and be positive instead of negative on here. So again, I don't know how they thought they had a lean misfire on this vehicle. It's actually running rich according to the O2 sensors. Going down our mass airflow sensor, it looks like it's good to go. And our short terms are hovering around zero. Everything's good to go there. So it looks like we don't have a plug cap yeah, but we do definitely have a fuel trim issue, but it's going in the other direction. Now, why? And we have cylinders misfiring on four cylinders in one bank. So is it a vacuum leak or is it timing? Well, you can simply bring up the VCT error pits, which will tell you how far off the timing actually is from commanded versus actual, all right? So you look at bank one on here, this is bank one, and it's off by seven and nine degrees on there. All right, you see how far off it is? Uh, whereas bank two, yes, bank two is also having a problem, but it's nowhere near as bad. It's, you know, one to 4% it looks like on there. Now this hover, this hover back and forth is perfectly normal, but it should be hovering right over zero. And you can see this one's pretty close. Uh, whereas bank two is definitely far enough off to actually cause a misfire. So what's happening here is the timing on this engine is off, but only on one of the banks, okay? And that'd be bank one, causing all the mixture and everything else to be wrong, compression, everything to be wrong on bank one only. And that's why we're getting the misfires, the slight misfires. These are not dead misfires. Dead misfires would be drop down dead misfires, okay? We're just getting a slight misfire because everything is kind of off on those cylinders, but it's close enough to allow the engine to run. 
So that is how I figured it out that quick. You can see that, that you know that's that's pretty far off on there, and it only takes that much, seven to nine percent, and it's just hovering there. So it's stuck there. It didn't, didn't get there somehow. It's stuck there. All right. So it's stuck that seven to nine percent off or degrees off on that bank, and that's causing all its problems. It's pretty simple. And again, because it's so minor, there are no timing error codes either. Okay, because this generally occurs only at idle, where they're off like that, and they kind of correct themselves as they get actuated going down the road. So you got to know to look at this stuff, look at all the basics on here to see what's actually going on, and the, the answer was pretty darn simple on there. Not only that, but if there was a vacuum leak from a cracked intake on here, you would hear a loud hissing noise, like It'd be a loud hissing noise from wherever the vacuum leak is, all right? So take a listen. Nothing. No hissing at all. No problems at all. No vacuum leak, just by listening to it. For the heck of it, I did go ahead and smoke test this one uh, through the intake port on there, and there was no leaks anywhere on the intake at all, sure enough. So I'm not sure how they missed that one and misdiagnosed it so badly. Even just by fuel trims, they should know it's not a lean misfire. So that is all for now. Um, at the end here of the video, once I get it apart for the regular timing job he came in for, I'll show you the phaser and how it gets turned in there when these phasers come apart on the early models and then they get stuck there and they cause issues like this. But that's all his issue was. They're trying to sell my intake and everything else and tell them all these problems and coils and plugs and guessing. You need to look at the data, sit here and look at the data and you can figure it out real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear it apart and I'll show you exactly how it looks on the inside of the engine when this is occurring. All right, so I had the valve covers off and the front cover off on here. I wanted to show you uh, the phaser, how it gets cocked in there when it starts coming apart. Uh, but it was upside down. And so I went to go turn it with the uh, ratchet here. And of course that movement allowed it to pop back into position and lock into the full advanced position. So uh, once I pull it off the vehicle, we, we uh, pull the bolt out, you'll see it'll kind of come apart. And you'll see what I mean on there. So what's happening, what you're looking for on here is you see the phaser right here. So here's the housing and then here's the trigger wheel and return spring. So right here, the center trigger right here should line up with the L. You see that right there? That's locked in the full advanced position. Now, once it comes out of that position, gets actuated, that's when it actually moves on here. And when it moves, it's supposed to return back to that full lock position centering on the L. What's happening with this one is it's coming apart and it's actually not coming back. And that's why the timing is off a few degrees and causing it. So. Like I said, I turned the crankshaft over to put the L upright so I could show you guys better the straight on shot. And of course that was enough to allow it to pop back in position. So we'll show you once we get the bolt out, that trigger and everything's gonna fly off of there for sure uh, on this one. But that's what you're looking for and that's what happens. The phaser, the different pieces of the phaser actually come apart and that of course affects the timing. All right, here we are on a test drive. I just did a timing job on here. I did not touch the intake. You can see it's the same vehicle. So the first thing we're gonna look at on here is the power balance. So I'll pull back a little bit and take a look at it. And I'll show you the difference on here. It's a huge difference. I mean, you can't even feel the engine running. It's unbelievable. And again, we didn't touch the intake or anything on here. Run perfectly smooth across all the cylinders. The other thing I look at, of course, is the VCTs afterwards. So we're looking for the air pit on there. Like I said, that hover um, is normal, but it must hover around zero, zero percent of error on there, zero degrees of error. Um, so that's normal, but it must hover around zero. So we have both sides fixed now. And of course it took care of the issue with the um, bank one cylinders being uh, slightly off and misfiring. So it just goes to show proper diagnosis is key here. And you know, even if they didn't know to go after the timing uh, component because there was no timing error codes, even if they didn't know to go for that, they should still know that negative 20 on the fuel trims means the engine's running rich, 
not lean. And if we had a cracked intake, it'd be running lean. So, well, this one's all done, all fixed, and down the road he goes.